now we are going to implement update employee rest api so go to employee controller and here i'm going to write the comment here build update employee rest api so we are going to follow the same steps like uh, controller layer is depends on service layer so first we're going to change service layer and then we'll get back to controller layer okay go to employee service interface and here we're going to declare a method the method returns employee object and the method name is update employee and we're going to pass the first argument as the employee object and second argument as the id of the employee class okay once we declare update employee method in employee service interface then we are going to implement this method in the employee service ampl class so go ahead and click on add unimplemented methods here and here we are going to implement update employee method so get rid of this comment here okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna first check whether the employee with id is exist in a database so let me write the comment here so first we need to check whether the employee with given id is existing database or not okay so for that what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna define the employee here let's call this as existing employee existing okay and uh, we're going to use employee the repository it has a method called find by id right so just call find by id method and just pass the id here now we got a employee with id so find by id method returns optional object right so what we're going to do is we're going to simply call or else method of optional object or else okay if employee object with given id is not existing database then we are going to simply throw a resource not found exception okay so let me write the lambda expression here new resource not found exception and the first argument is a resource name that is employee second argument is the field name that is id and third argument is the field value that is id now we have check whether a employee with a given id is you know exist in database or not by using this statement so if employee is not exist in database then it simply throw the resource not found exception now what we're going to do is we're going to update this existing employee from the employee so this is the employee we got from the client right now we are going to update all the details from this employee object to existing employee object existing employee dot set we are going to update first name so let's call set first name and employee dot get first name from the employee object which is provided by client similarly existing employee dot set last name and we are going to get last name from employee object get last name method let's call employee existing employee dot set email and we are going to get email from employee object by using get employee method so once we set all the updated employee details to existing employee then we are going to save save existing employee to database so just call employee the repository it has a method called save and we are going to 
pass existing employee object to it perfect so now we simply return this existing employee to the controller layer pretty simple isn't it so once we done all the changes in a service layer let's head over to the employee controller now and here we're going to create a method public and the return type of the method is response entity and we're going to pass type as employee and the method name is update employee okay all right now this is the method and we need to make this method as rest API by, by using at put mapping annotation so client sends a put HTTP request and this rest API should handle put HTTP request for that we are going to use add put, put mapping annotation here all right and the client uses the URL like this to call this update employee rest API so it will pass ID of the employee that uh, you know this rest API want to update for example if we want to update employee with ID 1 then we need to pass ID 1 in a URL and also the information that we need to update in a request body okay so this is the one so this is ID so we need to handle this ID by using path variable so let's within a curly braces let's add ID here so this is a path variable and this can be dynamically changed so that's why we have added in a curly braces so this is the syntax to bind the path variable value so in order to bind uh, in order to get value from this id what we're going to do is we're going to use add path variable annotation add path variable annotation and in order to map this uh, string that is id so we're going to pass simply id here and we need to store a value in some data type right some data uh, some variable that is long id now we got a value that is a one from the url now we are going to store update employer api request body in some object so for that again what we're going to do is we're going to use here the employee object and in order to convert convert the request you know body contains json right we need to convert that json into java object for that we're going to use add request body annotation pretty simple isn't it so pretty simple uh, just we need to you know get the json object from the request body for that uh, i have used add request body annotation here and in order to get a path variable i have used add path variable annotation it's pretty simple and now what we're going to do is we're going to simply return our instance of response entity class and make sure that you choose response entity that is response entity it has two parameters body with status and here we're going to pass a body a body as employee service dot update employee and just pass the employee object as a post argument id as a second argument and http status okay that's it pretty simple isn't it perfect so look at here we have used response entity as a return type because response entity we use to uh, you know prefer uh, response of the rest api we can add you know status to this class we can add a body to this class and we can add header etc so in order to create a complete response for this rest api we are going to use a response entity okay just remember why i am using response entity as a return type of the rest api here now let's go ahead and let's test this update employer rest api so let me stop the existing server and let me start 
fresh Spring Boot application. All right, our Spring Boot application is up and running on embedded Tomcat, Tomcat server on port 880. Let's head over to Postman client. And in order to test update employee, let's create a new request. Click on plus icon here and just type the URL HTTP localhost 8080 slash API slash employees and make sure that you choose put HTTP method here and make sure that you need to pass the ID of the employee that we are going to update for example one so we are going to update employee with ID one go to the body and go to the raw and here we want to prefer JSON so go to the post request and quickly copy this JSON and paste here inside a body and if you look at the database the employee with id1 has first name ramesh last name fadtare and email ramesh at the rate gmail.com now we are going to update first name and email for example first name now it has a ramesh right so instead of ramesh we store ram and email ram at gmail.com okay so first name ram second let's say last name let's change for, from Fadtari to Jadav and also change email from Ramesh at the rate gmail.com to Ram at the rate gmail.com go ahead and click on send and look at here we got a response like unsupported media type so make sure that you choose JSON as a content type here otherwise you will get a response like this so go ahead and click on send button now and there we go the employee with id 1 is successfully updated so look at your first name last name email is successfully updated you can also verify in a database so so existing first name last name email is like this if you refresh you can able to see here first name last name and email is updated for this employee with id 1 or it means that we have successfully you know built update employee rest api